Chapter 44, Out with the Old Miranda and Ella blasted off. They attached themselves to a new crowd destined for high school glory. And after a week of painful lunches where all they could do was talking about people that didn't interest me, I decided to make a clean break for it. They asked no questions. I told no lies. We just went our separate ways. I didn't even mind after a while. I stopped going to lunch for about a week, though, to make the transition easier, to avoid the fake, oh, shoot, there's no room at the table for you, Olivia. It was easier just to go to the library and read. I finished War and Peace in October. It was amazing. People think it's such a hard read, but it's really just a soap opera with lots of characters. People falling in love, fighting for love, dying for love. I want to be in love like that someday. I want my husband to love me the way Prince Andre loved Natasha. I ended up hanging out with a girl named Eleanor, who I'd known from my days back at PS22. Though we had gone to different middle schools, Eleanor had always been a really smart girl. A little bit of a crybaby back then, but nice. I'd never realized how funny she was. Not laugh out loud, daddy funny, but full of great quips. And she never knew how lighthearted I could be. Eleanor, I guess, had always been under the impression that I was very serious. And as it turns out, she'd never liked Miranda and Ella. She thought they were stuck up. I gained entry through Eleanor to the smart kids table at lunch. It was a larger group than I had been accustomed to hanging out with, and a more diverse crowd. It included Eleanor's boyfriend, Kevin, who would definitely become class president someday, a few techie guys, girls like Eleanor, who were members of the yearbook committee and the debate club, and a quiet guy named Justin, who had small round glasses and played the violin, and who I had an instant crush on. When I had seen Miranda and Ella, who were now hanging out with the super popular set, we'd say, hey, what's up, and move on. Occasionally, Miranda would ask me how August was doing, and then say, tell him I say hello. This I never did, not despite Miranda, but because August was in his own world these days. There were times at home that we never even crossed paths. Chapter 45, October 31st. Grants had died the night before Halloween. Since then, even though it's been four years, this has always been a sad time of year for me. For Mom, too, though she doesn't always say it. Instead, she just immerses herself in getting August's costume ready, since we all know that Halloween is his favorite time of year. This year was no different. August really wanted to be a Star Wars character called Boba Fett, so Mom looked for a Boba Fett costume in August's size, which, strangely enough, was out of stock everywhere. She went to every online store, found a few on eBay that were going for an outrageous amount, and finally ended up buying a Jango Fett costume that she then converted into a Boba Fett costume by painting it green. I would say, in all, she must have spent two weeks working on that stupid costume. And no, I won't mention the fact that Mom has never made any of my costumes because it really has no bearing on anything at all. The morning of Halloween, I woke up thinking about Grands, which made me really sad and weepy. Dad kept telling me to hurry up and get dressed, which stressed me out even more, and suddenly I started crying. I just wanted to stay home. So Dad took August to school that morning, and Mom said I could stay home, and the two of us just cried together for a while. One thing I knew for sure, however much I missed Grands, Mom must have missed her more. All those times August was clinging to life after surgery, all those rush trips to the ER, Grands had always been there for Mom. It felt good to cry with Mom, for both of us. At some point, Mom had the idea of watching The Ghost and Mrs. Muir together, which was one of our all-time favorite black and white movies. I agreed that that was a great idea. I think I probably would have used this weeping session as an opportunity to tell Mom everything that was going on at school with Miranda and Ella, but just as we were sitting down in front of the DVD player, the phone rang. It was the nurse from August's school calling to tell Mom that August had a stomach ache and should be picked up. So much for the old movies and the mother-daughter bonding. Mom picked up August, and the moment he came home, he went straight to the bathroom and threw up. Then he went to his bed and pulled the covers over his head. Mom took his temperature, brought him some hot tea, and assumed the August's mom role again. Via's mom, who had come out for a little while, was put away. I understood, though. August was in bad shape. Neither one of us asked him why he had worn his bleeding scream costume to school instead of the Boba Fett costume Mom had made for him. If it annoyed Mom to see the costume that she had worked on for two weeks tossed on the floor, unused, she didn't show it. Chapter 46, Trick or Treat August said he wasn't feeling well enough to go trick-or-treating later in the afternoon, which was sad for him because I know how much he loved to trick-or-treat, especially after it got dark outside. Even though I was well beyond the trick-or-treating stage myself, I usually threw on some mask or something to accompany him up and down the blocks, watching him knocking on people's doors, giddy with excitement. I knew it was the one night of the year when he could truly be like every other kid. No one knew he was different under his mask. 
to August, that must have felt absolutely amazing. At seven o'clock that night, I knocked on his door. Hey, I said. Hey, he said back. He was, wasn't using his PlayStation or reading a comic book. He was just lying in his bed, looking up at the ceiling. Daisy, as always, was next to him on the bed, her head draped over his legs. The Bleeding Scream costume was crumpled up on the floor next to the Boba Fett costume. How's your stomach? I said, sitting on the bed next to him. I'm still nauseous. You sure you're not up for the Halloween parade? Positive. This surprised me. Usually August was such a trooper about his medical issues, whether it was skateboarding a few days after a surgery or sipping through a straw when his mouth was practically bolted shut. This was a kid who had gotten more shots, taken more medicines, and put up with more procedures by the age of 10 than most people would have to put up with in 10 lifetimes. And he was sidelined from a little nausea. You want to tell me what's up? I said, sounding a bit like mom. No. Is it school? Yes. Teachers? Schoolwork? Friends? He didn't answer. Did someone say something? I asked. People always say something. He answered bitterly. I could tell he was close to crying. Tell me what happened, I said. And he told me what happened. He had overheard some very mean things some boys were saying about him. He didn't care about the other boys had said it. He expected that. But he was hurt by one of the boys. It was his best friend, Jack Will. I remembered his mentioning Jack a couple of times over the past few months. I remembered Mom and Dad saying he seemed like a really nice kid, saying they were glad August had already made a friend like that. Sometimes kids are stupid, I said softly, holding his hand. I'm sure he didn't mean it. Then why would he say it? He's been pretending to be my friend all along. Tushman probably bribed him with good grades or something. I bet you he was like, Hey, Jack, if you make friends with the freak, you won't have to take any tests this year. You know that's not true, and don't call yourself a freak. Whatever. I wish I'd never gone to school in the first place. But I thought you were liking it. I hate it. He was angry all of a sudden, punching his pillow. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. He was shrieking at the top of his lungs. I didn't say anything. I didn't know what to say. He was hurt, and he was mad. I let him have a few more minutes of his fury. Daisy started licking the tears off his face. Come on, Augie, I said, patting his back gently. Why don't you put on your Django Fett costume and... It's Boba Fett costume! Why does everyone mix that up? Boba Fett costume, I said, trying to stay calm. I put my arm around his shoulders. Let's just go to the parade, okay? If I go to the parade, Mom will think I'm feeling better and make me go to school tomorrow. Mom would never make you go to school, I answered. Come on, Augie, let's just go. It'll be fun, I promise. And I'll let you have all my candy. He didn't argue. He got out of bed and slowly started pulling on his Boba Fett costume. I helped him adjust the straps and tighten the belt, and by the time he put his helmet on, I could tell he was feeling better. Chapter 47. Time to Think August played up the stomachache the next day so he wouldn't have to go to school. I admit I felt a little bad for Mom, who was genuinely concerned that he had a stomach bug, but I had promised August that I wouldn't tell her about the incident at school. By Sunday, he was still determined not to go back to school. What are you planning on telling Mom and Dad? I asked when he told me this. They said I could quit whenever I wanted to. He said this while he was still focused on a comic book that he was reading. But you've never been the kind of kid who quits things, I said truthfully. That's just not like you. I'm quitting. You're going to have to tell Mom and Dad why, I pointed out, pulling the comic book out of his hands so that he would look up at me while we were talking. Then Mom will call the school and everyone will know about it. Will Jack get in trouble? I would think so. Good. I have to admit, August was surprising me more and more. He pulled another comic book off of his shelf and started leafing through it. Augie, I said, are you really going to let a couple of stupid kids keep you from going back to school? I know you've been enjoying it. Don't give them that power over you. Don't give them the satisfaction. They have no idea that I even heard them, he explained. No, I know, but Via, it's okay. I know what I'm doing, and I've made up my mind. But this is crazy, Augie, I said empathetically, pulling the new comic book away from him, too. You have to go back to school. Everyone hates school sometimes. I hate school sometimes. I hate my friends sometimes. That's just life, Augie. You want to be treated normally, right? Well, this is normal. We all have to go to school sometimes, despite the fact that we have bad days, okay? Do people go out of their way to avoid touching you, Via? He answered, which left me momentarily without an answer. Yeah, right, that's what I thought. So don't compare your bad days at school to mine, okay? Okay, that's fair, I said. But it's not a contest about whose day sucks the most, Augie. The point is, we all have to put up with the bad days. Now, unless you want to be treated like a baby for the rest of your life or like a kid with special needs, you just have to suck it up and go. He didn't say anything, 
but I think the last bit was getting to him. You don't have to say a word to those kids, I continued. August, actually, it's cool that you know what they said, but they don't know that you know that they said it, you know? What the heck? You know what I mean. You don't have to talk to them ever again if you don't want to, and they'll never know why. See? Or you can pretend to be friends with them, but deep down inside, you know that you're not. Is that how you are with Miranda? He asked. No, I answered quickly and defensively. I never faked my feelings with Miranda. So why are you saying that I should? I'm not. I'm just saying you shouldn't let those little jerks get to you. That's all. Like Miranda got to you. <clears throat> why do you keep bringing Miranda up? I yelled impatiently. I'm trying to talk to you about your friends. Please keep mine out of it. You're not even friends with her anymore. <clears throat> You're not even friends with her anymore. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? The way August was looking at me reminded me of a doll's face. He was just starting staring at me blankly with this half-closed doll eyes. She called the other day, he said finally. What? I was stunned. And you didn't tell me? She wasn't calling you. He answered, pulling both comic books out of my hands. She was calling me just to say hi, to see how I was doing. She didn't even know I was going to a real school now. I can't believe you hadn't even told her. She said the two of you don't hang out as much anymore, but she wanted me to know that she'd always loved me like a big sister. Double stunned, stung, flabbergasted, no words formed in my mouth. Why didn't you tell me? I finally said. I don't know, he shrugged, opening the first comic book again. Well, I'm telling Mom and Dad about Jack Will if you stop going to school, I answered. Tushman will probably call you into school and make Jack and those other kids apologize to you in front of everyone, and everyone will treat you like a kid who should be going to a school for kids with special needs. Is that what you want? Because that's what's going to happen. Otherwise, just go back to school and act like nothing happened. Or if you want to confront Jack about it, fine. But either way, if you... Fine, 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 he interrupted. What? Fine, I'll go, he yelled, not loudly. Just stop talking about it already. Can I please read my book now? Fine, I answered, turning to leave his room. I thought of something. Did Miranda say anything else about me? He looked up from the comic book and looked right into my eyes. She said to tell you she misses you, quote unquote. I nodded. Thanks, I said casually, too embarrassed to let him see how happy that made me feel. <clears throat>